As the superstar of the Rio Olympics, Simone Biles captured four gold medals and a bronze, but she hasn't stopped there. Back and better than ever. Tonight, the athlete many consider to be the greatest female gymnast of all time looks to wrap up a fifth national all-around championship here in Boston. We welcome you to the Team USA Summer Champion Series presented by Xfinity. Tonight, it's the 2018 U.S. Gymnastics Championships from beautiful Boston. And what a night it is, about 15 minutes from Fenway. We are inside the TD Garden here in the city that played such a prominent role in early American history, some gymnastics history perhaps tonight with Simone Biles and the athletes that will play a prominent role in that run up to the Tokyo Olympics less than two years from now. This is night two, the final night for the women. She was sensational on night one. Her lead right now looking for a fifth national championship more than three points thrilled to have you along terry gannon alongside the olympic and national champs nastia lucan and tim daggett um yeah she was sensational in rio at the olympics simone biles but is it possible nastia that she is getting even better as we look ahead to tokyo well it's not even possible that's a fact watching her night one of this competition we haven't seen her since the rio olympic games two years ago and i thought there she was the best she could have ever been and she has proved me wrong and we're still two years out from the tokyo olympics yeah it's absolutely astounding what she's capable of doing things that other people just don't even dream about getting done but it's important to note that this u.s team is also deep. I believe if they competed without Simone Biles at a world championships, they would defeat everybody. The problem <laughs> for everybody else with Simone, three and a half more points. Our chance tonight to watch greatness on display here in competition. Take it back to the opening night and what she did first on floor. Well, and it started right here on the floor after side. That, of course, her signature skill, the Biles, had a step out of bounds. Not that big of a deal, but right here, finished double twisting, double back, so much power, couldn't even control it. And on vault, this is just off the charts. People would dream of being able to do this so hard and just the smallest up. That's vault one, vault two to show that she's still the world's best and folks, she absolutely is. And if Simone ever had a weaker event, it would have been the uneven bars. But she has upgraded since the Rio Olympics, double twisting go back here. She is actually leading the competition on the uneven bars. And she faltered a little bit at the Olympic games on beam, gave up that gold. Had to settle for bronze, but she, right now, is the best in the world on that as well. Yeah, all four, she had the top number on the opening night. So, trying to do that again tonight. She has yet to do that in the four national all-around championships she has won. She hasn't won the all-around and all four of the apparatus, but that is a very real possibility tonight. So, we talk about those who are trying to at least make a run. Morgan Hurd. Teenager who won the world championship the all around last year. She said she was even surprised when she won that, but has taken that and has followed it up. Well, and she used that as an opportunity. You know, she didn't win the national championships last year, made the world team, came into the all around finals with an opportunity, and she delivered, winning that all around gold medal at the world championships. Now she has a little bit more of an expectation to come in here, especially with Simone Biles competing. She wants to do better than she did last year. It's gonna be hard to compete with Simone. I think next to impossible for anybody to win tonight, but second and third, obviously everybody wants to get on that podium finish. Absolutely, they're, they're all playing for second and they know that, they knew that for four years leading up to the Rio Olympic Games, so. But she's a tremendous and she's, she's pretty, pretty fierce as well. I thought she looked much better day one of these championships than she looked a couple of weeks ago at the qualifier, the classic. And at that classic, we talked to her. She said she had never competed against Simone Biles, been in at the same meet, except as a fan to get an autograph and a picture. <laughs> and now she is competing and in second place. So just about set to get underway. And we will start on floor with Riley McCusker, the 17-year-old from New Jersey, lives right along the shore, actually 
on our off days, we'll paddleboard right on the oceans in her backyard. And she is absolutely stunning. And right here is exactly where we will see it. The floor routine here just shows so much artistry. She truly brings the artistry to artistic gymnastics down to every single movement. So here we go, national championship on the line. Better than night one of the competition. Definitely had a little bit more power. Things got a little bit weird in the middle on that turn that she did, which is called a wolf turn. But overall, a great, great start for me to Yeah. Try to listen in throughout the night to the conversations with the coaches as athletes are done with their events. And the Cusker coming in third to start the evening. And here's her opening pass. She does a double layout. And what makes this so difficult is two times around, she's in a stretch position, pikes down the landing a little bit. So we'll get some deduction on the landing. But because of the way she performs her entire exercise, everything is to the utmost. It makes endurance a factor. And so the dismount is always critical. But this double back, plenty of power, just a little slide around, but really an excellent start for Riley. Injuries last year held her back a bit at the national championships, but she was the all-around bronze medalist. Looking to finish up even better than that this time around. Over to Paul and Morgan Hurd, who we just saw, the 17-year-old from Middletown, Delaware. Oh, boy. And that right there is what she says, told us that she needs to improve on, are the landings. That was a little bit out of control. Not as good as night one. She just gets a good block off the table. Good height. Doesn't, a little bit early of a twist maybe. But you see legs are pretty close together. But a big hop back. And then another step with that foot. I think she should have brought the other one forward. It might have been less deductions. Morgan said she's about 75% of her peak performance and likes it that way. Doesn't want to peak right now. But this is another step along the way to making the world championship team. Absolutely, it's a step towards that team, but also it's a very long season. See the deductions and the symbols. If you see green, it's a minimum deduction. If you go to yellow, still pretty good, not bad. But then if you're in red, you've got some serious deductions going on. And I think she'll definitely be in the green as she was. She gets the exact score she got on night one. I thought night one was a little bit better, though, frankly. So 14.4 and the floor exercise, the score for Riley McCusker in yellow, 13.45. It's just our way of giving you an idea of where those marks fall in relation to others that will come throughout the night. But that's a good score for her, better than she did in day one of the competition. So here is our first look at the five-time medalist from the Rio Olympics. You cannot overstate her role 
in the world of gymnastics, but also with the U.S. team now, with so many new faces, and we're seeing most of them tonight, that will be a part of that run to Tokyo, and she, without question, is the leader. She really is the leader, and she takes that role with a lot of responsibility. She knows that these women have not competed at an Olympic Games, and they're all looking up to her, too. You know, when we saw them a few weeks ago at the qualifying competition to the national championships, we asked them, do you ever just stop and, and watch her in training? Yeah. And they said, it's, it's hard not to. Yeah, Absolutely. of course. And she's the leader for a lot of reasons. One of the main ones is she starts every competition nearly three points ahead of everybody else because of her level of difficulty or her maximum scores. It's actually exactly 2.7 over Morgan Hurd from what they did night one. That's a pretty big buffer. Just waiting for the score for the previous gymnast here. And once they get that, she will be ready to go. Stepped away for about 14 months from training, came back, and the first time she competed was three weeks ago in Columbus. She gave herself a C-plus effort. Everybody else said it was an A or an A-plus. Even better here. Hoping for a B-plus only. Well, she got an A-plus and then some. Day one. short on that handstand, a beautiful connection right down to the low bar. And now she's going to go immediately right back up. New skill. A little bit of a form break on that. We have not seen that from her, but this is big right here. She does a double twisting, double somersault, an extra full twist from what she did at the Rio Olympic Games. Good, but not as good as night one. Back with new coaches as well, Laurent Landy and his wife, Seal. Now, Steve, what do you think? Well, I think for her, she's glad this event is over. <laughs> you know, as we mentioned earlier, this hasn't always been her strongest event, but see right there, the handstand was a little low, but went into this release move immediately right back down to the high bar. Connecting the two elements makes it difficult, but they also receive bonus tents for doing two skills in a row. And right here, Tim, as you mentioned, a little bit of a leg separation, but look at her fingertips, where she catches the bar. Well, not too bad from there. From one angle, it looked a little bit far. And that's a very challenging skill, and she did it great day one. Here's the dismount, though. When you add a full twist onto something, everybody else is doing a full twisting double. She does a double-double, and she just soars in the air. She's like a cat. It's one of her best qualities in gymnastics to go along with all of the other unbelievable qualities that she has. Start on uneven bars for her. Right now, she's got to be thinking, I got that out of the way, as you said. The rest is, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say a breeze, but I would say she's a lot more confident and comfortable on the last three events. This is the only event she didn't qualify to the event finals at the Olympic Games in Rio. And you know what? She doesn't look very happy right now. And, you know, that score, this score is going to be good enough, certainly, to keep her exactly where she is. But she's really not competing against anybody else. She says that, really, I'm competing against myself. 14.55 in yellow. Yeah, no, she had some deductions there. No, no question about it. After Rio, she went out Dancing with the Stars, released an autobiography, started college studies online. She was busy, but now focus on Tokyo. Back in a moment to Boston. The Team USA Summer Champion Series, presented by Comcast on NBC, is brought to you by Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. Xfinity delivers the best in-home Wi-Fi experience for all your devices. Here in Boston, TD Garden, the action continues. National championship on the line, and there's a look at Tim Forster, who is the new Tom Forster, excuse me, who's the new high performance director of the women's national team. We're so used to seeing Marta Caroli lead the women in an Olympic cycle, and Tom now the guy who is taking over there. A lot of challenges right now. Yeah, there certainly are a lot of challenges, and you know, despite everything going on in the sport, the biggest challenge for them really has been not having that training center earlier this month that was announced that they have found a training center, so that is a good first step to 
trying to overcome some of these challenges. Money the bars once again. Jade Carey, the 18-year-old from Phoenix. Big release right here. Nicely done. Now this is really cool. Check this out. Flying through the air. That's awesome. And you know, Jade hasn't done bars very much at all as an elite. And when I first saw her, I was expecting to see, you know, not a lot of ability, but she's actually, she could be really good on this event. Just needs a little more time and... Wow. And that was good. That is exactly the routine that Jade was hoping for. She kind of wants to get through this. No falls, have a clean routine. Just like Simone, this hasn't been the best event for her. As you said, Tim, she really hasn't competed at much. But she's got potential on it. She flies high when she does releases. She has great air sense. Get the number there in a moment, but over to Reagan Smith, who is the reigning U.S. all-around champion. She injured her ankle, though, during the warm-ups at the World Championships and could not compete there. It's been a reoccurring injury, also a recent toe injury, multiple toes, as a matter of fact, so it's hampered her. Certainly did on day one. Yes, it did, and you know, her qualifying score at the 2017 Worlds was higher than what Morgan Hurd scored to win that all-around title. Well, not quite the start that Reagan was hoping. Didn't have a great competition of the first day of these championships. Okay, okay. Big block on the triple layout. Double layout yeah. at the start okay. was incredible. Excellent. Best I've ever seen her do. But as she gets some words from her coach, Kim Zameskel, yeah. this combination tumbling run, she just doesn't even come close to getting this twisted all the way around. Look, and she reaches for the floor, touches the ground. That's a very large deduction. And this is what happened at the World Championships. She rolled her ankle, ankle in and was no way prepared to continue with the competition. Remember, she had competed in the qualifying rounds. That qualifying score was higher than Morgan Hurd's championship. As I said, night one was just not a great day. You see her almost limping. No, she was limping, oh, yeah. I think. Yeah, that was a limp. <laughs> and you know, I spoke with her coach, Kim Zameskel, and she said, Morgan, you left the gym ready, and you're still ready. Yes, you've had mistakes, but you're human. Balance beam, Aljona Shenikova, the 17-year-old from Colorado, now out in Utah, who has, well, her entire life has been about gymnastics. Most of these young women, so too, but both of her parents competed for the Soviet Union, and her sister Paulina was also a member of the U.S. national team. Big test right here. Three acro skills in a row. Very nice. Little 
little bit of a check there. And, you know, I had some discussion with some of the judges on Bean. Another one right there, up right before the competition. And, you know, <laughs> they basically expressed to me what I feel is that the rules are so incredibly strict. They said Bean is the hardest event by far, I agree. From a judging standpoint, more deductions. Oh, Woo. <laughs> boy, she got into a tight ball there. Thank goodness. That looked like she really didn't have a lot of rotation at the end there. And, you know, she really excels on the uneven bars, the balance beam, the floor exercise and vault aren't necessarily her strongest events. Beautiful start, though. Three elements in a row, each one in succession. Each one gets a little more tricky because you can't adjust. you got to keep moving. And she did that very well. Multiple balance checks throughout the routine. This skill, one of my favorites, it's called an anodi. Wasn't, wasn't really too far off, maybe questioning, doubting herself a little bit throughout the routine. And the same right here, a side aerial. And boy, does she get into a, a small ball. And if you are not rotating fast enough, that is what your coach wants you to do. Tuck as hard as you can. Look at how tiny she gets her body to get that around. It's a good thing. Is anybody ever all that comfortable on beam? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to me, it, she was. I'm holding my breath the whole time watching that. Uh. Saw Yona's appearance a moment ago. They also are her coaches. Reagan Smith in red there for that score. 12.6. Yeah, they took at least a point off on that one pass alone in that exercise. By the way, Jade Carey, uneven bars, 12.95. So a little bit better than she did on day one. Yeah, that's, that's a good score for Jade. Yep. See, so much support, so much talk in between you. You do have to remember, eventually, these are teammates. Absolutely. I was just about to say that, and you're going to see this all night long throughout all of these young women. Yes, it's an individual sport, but as you said, they are going to be teammates one day, whether it's the World Championships, the Olympic Games. Some are even off to NCAA competing at colleges together on the same team. Yep. Saw Tom Forster earlier, how much can he play a role in bringing that together? Well, that's very important, and I think for them to be able to find a training center, get back to that team unity. I know Simone was telling us she felt like a little bit of that was missing. She said the team from the 2016 Olympic Games, they were such a strong team together, all supporting each other, and she truly felt a little bit of that was missing here. Well, they were together every month, you know, and uh, that's where they all became friends, was at the camp. Keep it on the balance beam, 17-year-old Jordan Childs. 12th place oh, coming into the goodness. night. Wow. And it's, you know, that element doesn't look hard, but it's extremely difficult and so easy to find yourself off on. A lot of people don't have the power to complete the turn. Jordan has plenty of power and it just, it went in the wrong direction. It was nice though. A little bit of a pause again. And and you know, it's so difficult having such a major mistake at the beginning of your routine to stay mentally focused. In your mind, all you're telling yourself is, can I, can I just start over? It's <laughs> <laughs> so a round off double pike. Well, what, really good recovery though overall, I would say. Big sports family, her mom named her after Michael Jordan. And her mom, by the way, cannot watch her out here. She'll say, I'll, I'll get on beam and get ready to go. Come back after my mom will say, you did a great job on beam. And she'll say, you didn't even watch me. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, we have talked to all the athletes. 
important. Okay? We talked to all the athletes, and some of them say they don't want to think about the Olympics at all. And we asked her, and she said, oh, maybe three or four times a day. But that's not the way she wants to start this competition. But take a look. This is that wolf turn. And she just, is, her, her shoulders are just a little bit too far back. But last year, <laughs> same exact thing happened. But look what she did, was able to save it, goes for it, another turn, another turn, and another turn. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that went viral, and it should have, because you could ask somebody, anybody in the world, to replicate what she just did there, and they could spend I think years, and they would never be able to do it. Well, we asked her. We said, could, could you do that again? She goes, I don't even know how I did that or what I even what did. What was going through her mind? How am I going to stop? Sometimes, yeah. I think and she, she just, just wasn't. just riding the wave at that point in time. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't able to quite stop, and she saved it last year, unfortunately. Wasn't able to do replicate that, as she said, and we'll have to take a full point deduction. Disappointing opening night for her because last year she was the all around silver medalist at the U.S. Championships and came into tonight in 12th place. You saw the number in red there and more of Simone Biles and the best that America has to offer here at the National Championships in Austin. We welcome you back to Boston and the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. As we reported on Friday, there have been calls this week from several Olympic gymnasts, including Simone Biles, who spoke out here in Boston for more communication and transparency from the leadership of USA Gymnastics in the wake of the sexual abuse scandal involving former national team doctor Larry Nasser. Earlier today, Andrea had a chance to speak with the organization's president and CEO, Kerry Perry, about these concerns and the current state of USA Gymnastics. Kerry, you took over USA Gymnastics in December. It's been an organization in crisis. In your mind, what's the single most important change you've made that'll have an impact on the current crop of gymnasts? This is a really important time in our sport, and I believe we have not only the responsibility, but the opportunity to ensure that all of the voices of our athletes and survivors are heard. And one of the really mo important changes we've made was to create an athlete task force. And that athlete task force represents our athletes, one including a survivor of sexual abuse, that helps us make really important decisions in our organization. So one of the biggest criticisms from past and present athletes is the lack of communication. Simone Biles, your biggest star, best ambassador, came out this week in Boston during training for nationals and she expressed frustration at your approach. What do you say to her? Simone's incredible. She's, she is an ambassador of our sport. And I want her and everyone to know that for the past eight months, I've spent a lot of time just really listening and hearing all of our athletes and survivors and our members to really understand our path forward. And we've, we're gonna continue to communicate to our membership and we're gonna continue to communicate to the public. And as you are on that path forward, what do you think you and the organization can do better? I think that we continue on the path of making bold de decisions, bold changes, and that we communicate those as often as we can, continuing that through our membership and through different mediums. Carrie, thanks for your time. Thank you. So that is a conversation that took place earlier today here in Boston, and after speaking to Andrea, Perry met with the media and emphasized again the importance of the listening the organization has done and how they're now working on solutions to move forward. So we will continue in a moment from Boston Gymnastics National Championships here. Their flight disappeared five years ago. Today it landed and they have an age today. Executive producer Robert Zemeckis manifest. Coming your way Mondays this fall on NBC. Got a raised eyebrow from Tim Daggett. So <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, it must be pretty good. Back inside TD Garden, there are the numbers now. So the lead extended a little bit for Simone Biles. Morgan Hurd still in second. Pretty good race for third place overall? Absolutely. A, a very good race for third place. Actually, they switched Grace and Riley from day one. So 
But that lead for Simone is actually going to extend and keep extending throughout the night. That is a huge lead <laughs> to go into tonight with. Okay. Just about set on vault with Chalice Jones, the 16-year-old from Westerville, Ohio. And coached by Christian Garaldo, who was also the famous Gabby Douglas, Olympic gold medalist, two times at two Olympic Games. Well, that was a beautiful fall, but just like we saw earlier from Morgan Hurd, just needs to control that landing a little bit more. Yeah, that could be a lot better for her, and that one, that one wasn't great. First place, obviously, after that first rotation on balance beam now, Simone Biles. Had a stratospheric 15.2. Day one. Same move we saw Jordan Childs come off the beam on, but not Simone. What an unbelievable fight. Difficult skill right here, front with a half. She actually fell on this one time in warm up sometimes gives her problems three in a row. Perfect. Money. And if you were an Olympic watcher from Rio, oh, you know, a little bit of a mistake there. You're noticing scores are lower and it's not the gymnasts aren't as good. New skill for her, pike front. It's that they lowered the scores on every event by five tenths of a point. So if she gets a 15-2 like she did night one, 2016 results would say 15.7. Miss dismount, very difficult. Two back hand springs connected to me. Full twisting, double back. <laughs> I challenge you to watch that and not smile. Or even as laugh. Soon as I <laughs> <for the turn. laughs> it's just incredible. Thank you. You know what it's like to win an all-around gold at the Olympics, take some time off, and then attempt to come back. The challenge for her to keep herself motivated, to find things to drive her. Well, I wasn't even close to near what she is doing, but look at this right here. Again, same skill that we saw in just, this skill is very difficult. Not my favorite skill to watch, but so difficult because you have to be completely centered on the beam. There's that front with the half. You see her eye the beam all the way around. But I'll tell you what, uh, very few people, especially in a meet situation, would have stayed on the beam like Simone just did on that. Beautiful. Three elements in a row. About as perfect as you can be. And the dismount. Hardest dismount out of anybody here in this competition and, and really in the world, two back handspring, a full twisting double back. A lot of people can't do this skill on the floor. And Look at just, the landing. Just, just about perfect. And Terry, as you were saying, you know, talking about yep. coming back to a competition after you've already achieved everything that she has is is so difficult. When I talked to her before she got to Boston, she said, I'm physically ready, but it's the mental game that, mm. you know, I'm, I'm a little concerned about. That's where I, you know, had two-day competition at nationals, the world championships, the Olympic games later. It's, she needs to be strong mentally. Good score for Jones on vault, and now Reagan Smith, vault. Same vault we saw from Shalise Jones. Double twist, pretty good. She is capable, you know, she has not had a great event here, either day one or the start here at day two. One of her coaches, Chris Burnett, husband of great gymnast, Kim Zameskel. And you know, Kim told me that one of the things she said to Reagan is, you know what, you were on cloud nine last August. You couldn't have been any higher and it was too hard to hold on. This is probably a good thing for you. It's August. The World Championships are in late October, early November. Tough to have that patience. 
especially when you want it all right now. National championship. Morgan Hurd ready on uneven bars. Has a really good mix of elements in this routine. Great handstand. Now she'll connect a whole bunch of skills here. A little close on that first skill and then a little far on the transition to the low bar. Just the dismount right after this inside full and that was very past the handstand and awfully close to the bar. Boy, I, I'm surprised her toes didn't clip that bar. They might even have. But the biggest deduction was the handstand prior to it. Everything has to be vertical. And if you're just a little bit off, it's a tenth, all the way on up to five tenths. Yeah. So let's take a look. I'll tell you what, this was really, really close. There's that handstand that wasn't, or actually, coming up right here. Here's the skill where, let's look where she finishes, where the hand goes down right there, way from the handstand, and oh my, Look out. And that was great awareness because a lot of gymnasts would have been opening their body in preparation for the landing that time. I think she knew she was that close and she kept her knees bent. Thank goodness. Spend any time around her, I mean, she just lights up a room and keeps talking, tells you what she's reading. She reads all the time. Big Harry Potter fan, known for the glasses. Went to contacts for a while, but the chalk would get in her eyes, so it goes back to the glasses, and it's glad, she said. Yeah, she said it took too much time away from training. She'd have to go and wash them out. The score on balance beam for Simone Biles, 14.9. Yeah, you know, it's a three-tenths lower than night one. I think that that's just about right where they should be with that score. But that wasn't at her best, and that'll probably be the best score of the night. Riley McCusker now, who lost a little bit of ground in that first rotation. Ready on vault. First time at the national championships when she has been healthy in the last couple of years. Had an arm injury, a hamstring injury, which limited her last year. And this has always been a struggle for her, but she's improved vastly this year. Same ball we've seen, double twist. Another nice job. The problem is with that is she doesn't just have one step. She hops backwards and then she takes another step. So it's two separate deductions. For the women, if it's more than a meter, it's three tenths off for a step. If it's less, it's only one tenth. Let's see how much she slides here. The landing slides. Uh, I guess that well, she wasn't kinda, as bad. <laughs> yeah, she kind of she kind of disguises it a little bit, but so she just gets a little. If you see on the horse, her elbows bent, kind of crunched into the table a little bit. So could have gotten. You see, her foot is out of the line. Again, another deduction. But as I was saying, could have gotten a little bit more. Thank you. <laughs> had she not been. Her elbow's yeah. not even felt. But that's not the kind of gymnast she is. She is an artistic, classical gymnast. And for her to be able to do this vault, that's a huge accomplishment in itself. And she's doing a great job with it. Just completed her junior year of high school. She's homeschooled eventually. Wants to go to the University of Florida. So many gymnasts with plans. They've committed to different universities, but at the elite level now competing, looking ahead to the Olympics. 14.1, so. A, a, a good score for her, very good on vault for her. She's Prior, good. we saw Morgan Hurd, 14.5 on the uneven bars. Once again, really, you see that 1.6 in deduction? I would say five of them came on that skill before her dismount. And as Jay Perry gets set over on balance beam, we'll tell you that Reagan Smith with her vault, 14.05. There goes Carrie. You know, she had just an electric year in 2017. Wasn't even elite 
before that, which is the top categorization of gymnast around the world. She went was actually up. scouted, basically, by the national team training staff at a level 10 competition, invited her to a training camp. Shortly after, made the world championship team. And then came home with two silver medals, one on floor exercise and one on vault. And in my opinion, at that point in time, she was the better vaulter, just didn't have the landings in the finals. Beautiful. Difficult series, three elements in a row. Very good. Really well put together, no major hesitation. She'll definitely get connection, which are extra tenths of a point. In this routine, night one, she had a fantastic showing. And once again, showing so much confidence and comfort, and that's very difficult to do on the balance beam. Very powerful gymnast, double pike. Big step on the landing, that's a three-tenth step right there, but overall, a great routine from Jade Carey. Her dad, Brian, is her coach. You know what that's like, Nastia. At times, a challenge. You told us they keep it all separated, though, gym and home. So we get the number for Jade Carey, and then we'll continue with rotation two here at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships in Boston. Back to remind you, you can download the Team USA app for up-to-the-minute news and exclusive behind-the-scenes coverage of your favorite athletes on their road to Tokyo. Visit the Google Play Store and iTunes to download the Team USA app today. You got it? Got it. Oh, you're, you already have? Okay. <laughs> Tim's still behind. You didn't have it yet. Back with a number for Jade Carey, 12 9 five. Come on. Yeah, it, it's a good score. It's, it's about the same she did night one. How about Trinity Thomas and what she's been able to do to this point, get in the top five. She's already down in Gainesville at the University of Florida taking classic classes in the dorms. You know, I've been very impressed with her, and she came into this competition telling us that she probably didn't do the amount of numbers of routines that she was hoping to do very short on that handstand, but great connection. Legs a little a bit apart on that last skill. But the thing that I love about her gymnastics is everything looks easy when she does it. Beautiful lines. Double layout, keep her body nice and straight. And a hop on the landing was a little better. Once again, night one, I believe. Won a couple of medals last year at the national championships. Just missed the podium and coming into tonight was just off the podium by about half a point. And here's that dismount. So a double layout, what the judges are looking for is for the athlete to keep their hips open all the way until that landing. And she does a nice job. Very good. Think about what she did too this past year in the winter. Yeah, she was bored. She took up diving, <laughs> said I'm gonna compete. She ends up second in the Pennsylvania State Championships. That's awesome. And <laughs> I mean, come on. She said that diving actually helped her air sense a lot with her twisting as well. Over to Floor and Jordan Childs, the 17-year-old from Vancouver, Washington. She was runner-up to Reagan Smith in 2017 at these national championships. Did not get the nod to compete at the world championships in Montreal. A lot of people were very surprised with that. Got the Wonder Woman theme here. <laughs> It is very wonderful. <laughs> You're right, Terry. I just saw the by the sleeve there. Said she only thinks about Tokyo and the Olympics three to four times a day. You, you, it's really weird. You get so many different reactions from gymnasts, gymnasts when you're talking to them because some say, I keep it locked away. I don't even want to go there in my mind. Morgan Hurd says, I keep it behind seven locked doors. <laughs> yep. And I think the next person we talked to was Jordan, and she says three or four times a day, she goes to public school. She says she's constantly reminded of it by her, her friends and her schoolmates. So they're waiting for the previous score, the person competing 
on floor. They had a score change, and now they're ready. Very powerful on this event. Has added some new skills, but in the first day of the competition, her third pass just didn't quite have the energy on her double layout to make it around. Disappointing. I mean, that third tumbling pass again was a little bit short, but that turn that she was supposed to do, she was supposed to complete all the way up on her foot and not sit down like she did. The judges could take up to a full point. I, I think they're going to because it was an actual element. Yul Maldauer did something similar to this in the men's competition last night. This is where she fell on beam. Remember, she's out of control and falls out of a skill. That is a full point deduction. Is that tired legs at that point? I think that it was in her head. You know, she just did that on beam, and she fell off on it, maybe thinking, you know, huh. in the past, or... How much does one apparatus affect the next and the next throughout the night? As we look at Trinity Thomas, 13.5 on the uneven bars. Well, it certainly does, especially if you're doing the same exact skill on that next event. Normally, you don't really have a lot of crossover from the from the uneven bars to the balance beam on, on the skills, but it's a mental challenge to kind of turn that page and go on to the next event. But Gymnasts are different. Some are fantastic after they make a mistake, and some just cannot get it out of their head. Short memory as an athlete. It no helps. matter the sport. It helps. And it's got to be agonizing when you know you've struggled, you've made a, a big mistake to wait for the score to pop up. And, and they've got a delay because they're having trouble with their <laughs> scores again. But, you know, all of these girls are shooting, obviously, down the road, 2020 Tokyo, the Olympic Games, but they want to also qualify and compete at the World Championships in Doha later on this year, the end of October, and where Trinity helps Team USA. They need five gymnasts to travel to Doha, and she is tremendous on vaulting. Excuse me, Jordan Childs, don't know what I was talking about there. Her vaulting is, is good enough to maybe get her there all by itself. Big hit on the number here. Three points taken off on floor for Jordan Childs. Yeah, and then they certainly took that full point, it seems, for the turn. And of course, that third tumbling pass was under rotated. So, Tim, you're talking about individual skills on certain apparatus and excelling there. Kara Eaker was second on the beam on the opening night in eighth place overall. So that means she won, because Simone Biles doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Has a really great routine that keeps moving if she's able to pull it off. Potentially has the highest maximum starting score, even more than Simone. I don't know if you give that one, though. That extra arm swing. Mm -hmm. Which you cannot do if you are trying to get that bonus connection. And another one. Wow. That was a great fight. She looked like she was a little bit low. 
after that side aerial. Really nice. said she has the potential to have a higher maximum score than Simone. That was beautiful, but, but I think she has missed a number of connections. At least I have her, so I don't think that'll be the case tonight. Well, that was a beautiful routine. We're not used to seeing routines that are so fluid and are constantly connecting not only those skills and combinations, but from one dance move to the other, it, it was just. Al Fong and <laughs> Harmony Baratian, longtime coaches at Gage. Beautiful routine. Just they had a great a day today. They had a great day today. Their junior gymnast actually came out on top. Wong won it all. Kara Eaker, just 15 years old, so you're looking for that next generation and stars on the horizon. She could be one of them from Rain Valley, Missouri. All right, so Grace McCallum was one that moved up into third in that battle for the bronze medal position, and on the uneven bars, short time ago, this is what she did. Same exact mount that Simone Biles does on bars up until that point. Had a very big win for herself at the Pac Rim Championships. Morgan Hurd had an uncharacteristic fall on her last event, and Grace ended up the all around champion there. A little bit over, but you know, she's got some skills when it comes to those landings. She's able to put her feet down, glue them, and not move. So the number, 13.65, little nod and approval, I guess, from Grace McCallum, trying to hold on at least to that third spot as we wind down here. Rotation two of four in the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. And a night headlined by the greatest in the world, maybe ever. And Tim would say, stop saying maybe. Yeah, she is. stop. Much more to come. <laughs> Thursday, September 6th, football is finally back at a big party in Philly. Eagles raising their first Super Bowl banner before taking on the Atlanta Falcons. And the NFL season kicks off Thursday, September 6th only on NBC. Two rotations in the books here in Boston. And yep, it's all her world. On top, Simone Biles, who just dominated at the Olympics in Rio. Got a teammate in the house tonight, Ellie Raceman, the six-time Olympic medalist, three of them gold, 2012 and 2016. Grew up here in the Boston area. And earlier, Andrea Joyce caught up with her. Well, like the rest of the world, Allie is in awe of Simone Biles. You competed side by side with her for so many years. You know how hard it is to make a comeback. What do you think of what she's accomplished? It's absolutely incredible. I was with her last night, and we were talking about she's only been back for nine months, and she looks this good. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Her floor routine looks easy for her. She's working so hard. I'm so happy for her and so proud of her. So you have been very busy advocating for sexual abuse victims. What are the positives that you've seen coming from those efforts? Well, I think such a great thing is that everyone is sharing their stories and people are being heard. I think everyone has a story, and everyone deserves to be heard, and everyone um, deserves to feel like everyone cares and I think that is what's happening and so I'm I'm very proud of the Me Too movement and hope that we can only go forward from here. Allie, thanks for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> and also tonight, not only did Allie speak with Andrea, but also had a long conversation with Tom Forster, the new high performance director, the man leading the way for the women's team. So obviously for Tom, and he's he's talked to us about that and Allie's made a point of wanting more communication in those two 
were able to communicate throughout the evening here in Boston. Warm-ups continue for the next rotation. Got two more left here. And Simone Biles looking to march toward history and win her fifth all-around title. NASCAR pays tribute to seven decades of racing and the legends that made them special. Don't miss the NASCAR Darlington, September 2nd on NBC SN. Had some storms last couple of days here in Boston. Moved through quickly, though. So very nice day today. Back inside TD Garden and Simone Biles halfway home to being alone at the top with five national all-around titles. Not on the scene last year, took that year off, but back and incredibly looking better than ever. So the person closest to her, Morgan Hurd. We talked about her win at the World Championships. That's when most people really got to know her, and she told everybody she's a big Harry Potter fan. J.K. Rowling tweeting congratulations after the win at the World Championships, and the answer from Morgan then eventually Rowling following that up too so your real life hero in glasses <laughs> and she's followed it up Morgan has and on night one at least was wearing the Harry Potter earrings there you see the lightning bolt right there and Morgan being one of the few athletes that wears eyeglasses the spectacles on her ears as well different earrings tonight <laughs> perhaps to match the rhinestones on her leotard could be yeah, it's a better story than I had. I thought she'd change the luck and go into first place, but you're right. It I'm, probably I'm is. being fashion forward here, I'm, Terry. I'm sure you're <laughs> correct on that. You know, she told us that uh, sometimes she forgets that she was world champion or is world champion. She says until she gets to the gym, she looks up and there are four life-size posters of her hmm. inside the gym. The there difficult skill right here, full twist. Wow. Oh, a little bit off, night one was great. Two steps backwards. Very good. Nicely done. And you know, Morgan's a tremendous gymnast and ha already has a lot of accolades, but one of the things she battles is the level of consistency she fell on beam at the qualifying meet on a tucked front somersault, which should come right here. Day one here, though, she took it out, wanted to stay clean, and it looks like she's going to do the same thing. It would be a very big deal for her if she could go Four for four, night one, and four for four here. Big dismount, double pike. And that was a great routine. She's capable of doing an even more difficult dismount, has taken out some difficulty here at these national championships. Right now. Okay. So good. Thank you. Thank you. That was a little scary on, on that uh, back with a fall. You know, I mean, night one, as you said, Nastia was great. How'd she say she wanted to be remembered? Don't be boring. <laughs> awesome. She's incapable of that, I think. And here's that skill. So a backflip with a full twist. And you see her right here, eye the beam. And not too bad, a little bit off to the side. But good D save. Dismount has a lot of power on this. Is capable of adding a full twist, which is outrageous with your legs straight like she does. A little bit over-rotated. And that right there was more than a meter, I'd say. Three tenths off, not one. <laughs> Looking for a bag while well, she continues that, we go over to Reagan Smith on the uneven bars. Where she had a disaster in day one, and she's actually much improved on this event. She put it together right there, night one, had already had a problem. Wow. As you said, problem. And that, that should not have happened. Let's look. 
She's definitely close enough to the bar. My guess is she sees it, and she's already thinking about what's coming next. You see Kim Zemesco, 1991 World All-Around Champion, looking on. Kim says, I desperately want to be able to help her. I just keep reminding her that you're ready. You were ready when we left the gym. You're still ready now. And with all of the mistakes that she's been having here, and not because she's not prepared, they all really seem to be a dismount there, but it seems to be these mental challenges. She's not trusting herself. She's having mistakes on skills and, and moves that she typically doesn't make mistakes on. Eight athletes will be a part of that world selection team, the, the camp, and they have a chance to be one of the five. Is, is she solid there, or does this really come into play, the struggles here? Oh, she's, she should be solid there. Uh, I mean, the potential for her is so great. I mean, they're going to be disappointed. The selection committee, Tom Forster, um, Kim is upset as well, but I can't imagine them not. And that's what Kim told me earlier tonight. All right. So the number for Morgan Hurd and now Grace McCallum in third place after two rotations here on beam. This is a really cool mount. Dives back right to that handstand. That is. Just something a little different. Sarah Jensi, her coach, moves the board, who is also the coach of Maggie Nichols, part of the 2015 gold medal winning world team. Now at the University of Oklahoma. Really nice start right there. Saw so many others struggle on that wolf turn, but does it very well. This is really good. I mean, for her, no real hesitations, no visible bobbles. Very nice routine. You know, she seems to have a lot of composure for a very young gymnast. Gave her a lot of confidence that win at the event beginning of the season, the Pacific Rim, where she beat Morgan Hurd, won the all-around there. And there's that mount. Look how cool that is. Right up to a handstand. Don't see too many people doing that. Very nice. Good job. Good job. Very nice. It really doesn't get anything extra for it, well, but it's, it's just cool. It's a flare. Yeah. <laughs> you should. Oh. For coolness. 13.15. Yeah. 2.75 mm. in deductions. Hmm. So we go to Jade Carey on floor, ninth place, so lower than she expected coming into these championships. Simone Biles has the most difficult floor routine in the world. This young lady right here, number two. Wow.
Wow. Unreal. That is so hard from start to finish. I mean, around the world, they're going to be watching Simone Biles' floor, Jade Carey, and they're going to say, what the heck is in the water there? <laughs> <laughs> and this might be the best Jade Carey that I feel like we have ever seen. Take a look at this opening tumbling pass. So difficult. Two flips in the air and two twists in a complete laid out position. We'll see Simone just do that later, but wow. And, and just about a stuck landing right there. Fantastic. At the end of her routine, though, she's exhausted. And to do this front flip into a full in, very few gymnasts can even pull a full in off at the end. She's already done tons of difficulty. Wow, really, really amazing. And just becoming an all around gymnast or, or starting to focus on that, she really has it in the past. Grace McCallum, 13.7. For effort on the balance beam. Yeah, but as you said, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to add in that extra event when you're so used to only focusing on a few. Over to bars, Riley McCusker. Using fourth after two rotations, but two of her stronger events left. Yeah, I think she is best here. Really tricky combination here. Three in a row. Watch this. Now connect down low and right back up. Oh, wow. That was gorgeous. Dismount, very unorthodox. Half turn. Oh, my. Well, she definitely moves into third place without question. Riley is on today. That was great. And this is what we have just been searching for from Riley. Had injury after injury. Wasn't quite recovered, had a few mistakes earlier on in the year. And it is that battle for third. She need 14.25 to pass McCallum. So we'll see what she gets. Oh, she gets more than that. <laughs> And here's that combination. So three skills in a row. What makes it so difficult is she goes from the high bar, immediately flips down to the low bar, and right back up to the high bar. But this skill itself is difficult, let alone connecting it to the, from the two previous skills before. Fantastic. Absolutely fabulous. And sometimes she, if she has a struggle, it comes on the dismount. This one, not at all. She gets her heels up over her head and knows where she is at all times. A great landing. Best bar routine I have ever seen Riley McCusker do, right there. Took the words out of my mouth. Not a bad yeah, time like to bring it. Up right in the middle. <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean? I maybe got chalk in them or something. All right, so Jake Carey for her floor routine, 14.2 in yellow, and the deduction's just over two. About a, tenth, about a tenth better than night one, but I thought it was better than that, personally. You guys got a moment here. We're going to head over to Andrea Joyce in the Xfinity Zone. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Never know who you're going to run into at Nationals. How's this? Olympic gold medalist Sean Johnson. Here at Nationals, you won three in a row. One is a junior, two is a senior. What's it like to be back, and what do you miss? Uh, it's always weird coming back. I always get nervous. I feel like I should be on the floor competing, but I love it. I love watching now. The girls are so incredible. I'm glad I'm not competing anymore, um, but I love it. It's just, it feels like being home. Ten years ago to the date, you won gold on the beam in Beijing. You added three more medals. Aside from all that hardware, though, what did you take away from those games? I don't know. I feel like I grew up kind of as into a woman at the Olympics just because I learned so much. But being able to share that with my teammates, my, my sisters, my family, it just it gave me this bond between these girls that's lifelong. I mean, I'm still best friends with Nasty and all the girls that are here. And it just is the greatest experience of my life. Well, that's it. So here you are a decade later. You're married, best yeah. friends with Nasty. What else is exciting in your life? Uh, so much. I mean, I'm bouncing around the country with my husband who plays football. We're you know, starting different companies. I just launched a health and fitness brand called Fit, uh, all about like body awareness and body image and positivity. And I don't know, doing things like this, coming back to see the girls is what I love. Not surprising that you're so busy. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Yeah, of course, thank you.
By the way, Andrea listed right after being married. Hi, Best Dad. friends with Nastia. So you're number two on the list. <laughs> I'm honored. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Teammate of yours, 14.8. Yeah, that's clearly enough. And I think that's the best score of the night on the uneven bar. So all she needed was 14.2 uh, and change, but it is Simone Biles, as expected, leading the way and on floor. Highlight of the night for me. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. There are moments throughout competitions that you really look forward to. This has been one of them tonight. And many here with Simone Biles, but stepping up to that top step and about to take the floor. That'll happen in just a moment. We continue with the national championships here. Shania Adams, the 16-year-old from Plain City, Ohio, her second season on the senior level, eventually wants to go compete for the University of Alabama. Wow, that was great. Really calm. And if you only saw people like her do that, you'd think <laughs> it was easy, but we've already seen. Great combination, three skills in a row. at Buckeye Gymnastics under Kitty Carpenter. That is where Gabby Douglas made her comeback and made her second Olympic team for Rio in 2016. And that was a great routine, starting with those wolf turns that we saw so many falter from, so good. So good. but not from her. I, I tell you, you know, it's really challenging. And I don't think I've seen anybody do that better, the triple and then the double. All right, noise level rises a little bit. Get ready to be impressed and entertained. On floor, Simone Biles. And right away from the start of this routine, you will see the opening tumbling pass. I guarantee you'll never see anybody do it as well as Simone Biles. That's the Biles. unthinkably powerful. <laughs> As you said, Tim, the most difficult routine in the world. 
all eyes and most phones with the cameras on her throughout that entire routine. Just taking a look around. Nothing else was going on. And, and every gymnast was watching her on floor. Every gymnast, every coach, every fan, yes. every single person. All over the world. And you know, she's powerful. Everybody knows that. But what people don't know is her technique is impeccable. Watch, she doesn't twist at all off of the floor. So hard to teach that. It enables her to have the rotation to get that all the way to her feet. That is pure technique. Brilliant. I'm taking another look. This skill is so difficult. It's two flips, two twists, but what makes it so impressive, look how high she gets in the air. And not only does she make it on her feet, she just has too much power. Just Night incredible. one, she went out of bounds with three tenths on each one. This one is her move, the Biles. It would be sacrilege to not do the Biles when it's got your name on it, but both nights we've seen her incur a three-tenth deduction on it. I know we're supposed to care. Who cares? I, you're right. <laughs> I don't. I know. And this is that dismount. She does two flips, two twists. Same exact skill that she opened with, but in a tuck position. Thought her heel almost went out of bounds. It did it, not, though, I don't think. Nobody else in the world able to do that. And incredibly, after stepping away, she made it even more difficult. Back in Boston with a floor score for Viles. Explain this. Well, she had deduction. She went out of bounds, three tenths of a point, and she also had a couple of stutter steps after almost all of her landings. All right, so 14.7 yellow there, but overall, the lead even larger right now. Simone Viles over more than her. Riley McCusker, Grace McCallum, good race for that third place. Back in Boston, set for the final rotation. Reagan Smith, it has not been a national championship to remember or one that she had envisioned. No, absolutely not. You know, what a, what a difference a year makes. At this point in the competition last year, she was almost on her way to clinch that national title. If you had told me, Terry, that she would be 11th at this point, after two and a half days at the Nationals, I would say, well, obviously, you need to do a little more research. <laughs> but And this event for her is so great, but night one just didn't quite show that greatness. Right, That was good, though. And she completely boned a beam routine in training. It was fabulous, really nice. Here's a back with a full. She's tremendous on beam. She was the alternate for the 2016 Olympic Games, and it was prim primarily because of balance beam. Just a little, acting a little unsure of every landing. Just the dismount right here, double pike. There well, you was, go. That was a lot better than night yes. one, and that is the way that she wants to finish with a clean hit routine. That's a good one to take home. I need to turn. Some might say that she shouldn't be taken to that camp. I think that would be a gigantic mistake. World Championship camp, you're talking about the selection over to Grace McCallum. That race for third place, currently just outside of that.
It's a great routine for Grace, and what a solid competition for her here today. As we said earlier this year, won a huge title in the all around in the Pacific Rim competition. Would love to make her way on to that world championship team. Having just stepped up to the senior level, she was 11th in the all around as a junior at the 2017 national championships. Reagan Smith been a struggle since that ankle injury at the world championships and coming off that win last year here so we'll see third place for Riley McCusker right now half a point or so separating the two go back to the American Cup watch this so scary I, it's it's hard to even watch she fumbles her first foot right there you see and then completely misses the second one and uh. that could have landed right on her head and then really a1. Really scary. Look at how close. Oh, jeez. I know, and you're not wanting to watch Nastia right now. Not only am I not wanting to away. watch, but the beam is fairly close to where we're sitting, and I remember being in that position sometimes hearing you guys, so <laughs> you never want to be thinking about that. You but. hope it's not, but would that be going through her head? Um, it better not be. Um, she's got a lot to do before that point, but one of the things you try to do as an athlete, your coach is trying to get you to dismiss all of those negative mental thoughts. Big combination coming up right here, three skills in a row. Stunning. Great extension. A lot of the athletes that are doing these leaps are not achieving 180 degrees with their legs on a split. What I love so much about Riley, especially on the balance beam, is the attention to detail. Every single movement, just like that, fingers. So here we go though, this is the dismount where she has had struggles. Today, so good, all weekend long. That's eight routines. The best that we have ever seen hit. Riley in an all-around competition two days in a row. That is a big deal. Riley because her first elite meet out, the big one, the American Cup, was a disaster. People didn't think she could recover from that. She was great at the Classic in Columbus, Ohio, the qualifying meet to here, and then two full days punctuated with a giant exclamation mark on the skill that has troubled her before, but not today. And, and hopefully we can stop showing that scary this month. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> With the score guys that Grace McCallum got on floor, 13.8, it means Riley McCusker needs 13.25 in order to get third place. Which he's gonna get. Yep, <laughs> all right, we'll take you over to vault, and it's kind of a victory run for Simone Biles now. This is spectacular. Power like no one else. Oh. Pretty much identical to night one of the competition. I don't, okay, I don't know where they're gonna find the deductions. I, I don't, just that, that, landing, that, landing, that landing was less than a meter. She has tremendous power. Let's look at her legs. Are they together? From board to table? Pretty darn good, just a little cross with the toes. I don't think the judges can see that in regular motion. And that's a one-tenth step. I got one and one. So that means that that should score a 15.8. They won't do that, but. All right, we're going to get to watch her again on vault. And the reason she does two vaults at the Olympics, at the World Championships, to be considered to make it to finals, and then to win an event, you have to do two different vaults, and you also have to do them that are unrelated from different families. So she did a half turn onto the board, half turn onto the table. This time, she'll just do a half turn onto the board and go backwards onto the table. It's called an aminar. 
And if there's a person that has ever done it better than Simone, I would say maybe Michaela Moroni. But they are in the same league, and they are alone. 15.6, the number. Four tenths. I don't know. <laughs> I'm running out of words to say. Just absolutely incredible. Oh, she's amazing. Her biggest margin of victory at one of these nationals came in 2015, 4.95. She is not at that mark, but job, after Nicole. she gets her score, well, she actually did get it. She's, she's past that. Yeah, and that, By a lot. that smile on her face, I think, before she landed that time. <laughs> look, at the, look at the jump off the table. Reaches for the ground, just a slight little hop. Once again, that's a tenth of a point hop. Maria Paseka from Russia, who's a world champion on that event, said, I was so disappointed she was coming back. It's not fair, she said. So the four national championships that she has won, 2015, the largest margin of victory, 4.95. So she's approaching that. We'll see. I'm not sure she's all that concerned about it. <laughs> um, but this would be, obviously, she did not compete last year. And this would be her fifth. And take her to the top all alone with five. Oh, I didn't know she was so that battle for third place, 14.35. Yeah, Riley McCusker. More than enough to take her ahead of Grace on, McCallum. Man, so she's holding on to third place in this final rotation. And the gymnast in second, Morgan Hurd. We'll see her on floor as Simone Miles has earned it once again and entertained all of us. Beginning August 31st, Kerry Walsh Jennings, Julia Mancuso, and other top athletes begin their journey to achieve performance goals and chase their Olympic and Paralympic dreams. KT Tapes presents Working Out with Team USA Friday, August 31st on NBCSN. So everybody gathering around Simone Biles. She's just listening. I, th I thought maybe we'd hear a word of wisdom or two. From Five-time champ, going to be, it's unofficial, but Morgan Hurd, the world champion still to come on floor, trying to hold on to second place as we continue from Boston. The Team USA Summer Champion Series, presented by Comcast on NBC, is brought to you by Xfinity. Proud partner of Team USA, Xfinity delivers the best in-home Wi-Fi experience for all your devices. Okay, Simone Biles, her work is done for the night. Boy, did she work uh, in some you? kind of yeah, work. So right. has first place handily. <laughs> now, Morgan Hurd still to go on floor, and that's what she needs, 13.3 for second place. If she gets what she got night one, which was a 13.85, Simone Biles wins by a stratospheric 6.55. Which unofficially, by the way, looking at it would be the largest margin oh. ever. Unheard of, yeah. really. So here's the world champ. And all those numbers under the code of points system, so. If you're into that kind of thing. Oh, she's gone. Um, wait, well, because I saw it because everybody was tweeting it to me. World champ, Olympic champ, national champ we had coming in um, that we got to watch this week. The U.S. team in pretty good hands, in pretty good shape looking ahead. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, and especially going into this world championships, a team competition last year's worlds were not. So here we go with Morgan Hurt.
great routine and what a phenomenal week for Morgan Hurd. As I've said, she sometimes struggles with consistency. Four hit routines night one, four hit routines night two. She, I believe, will win the silver medal. 13.3 is what she would need. You believe it's enough with that effort? 13.85 is what she got day one, so. Yep. Sixth last year, silver this year as we send it over to Andrea. All right, Simone Biles making history with a fifth national title. Having taken time off, how different or special does this one feel? Because you're older and wiser, too. Yes, I am. No, it feels really special, um, especially coming back after such a long break and being able to keep up with the other girls, and it feels great. Keep up, yeah, at least, right? So you gave yourself an A-plus for your Rio performance. You were shooting for a B-plus here. It was the final exam. How'd you do? I, I give it a B-plus. <laughs> B-plus, really, that's yeah. all. I still think there's more to work on. All right, well, congratulations, and we will see you down the road. Thank you. Terry? She doesn't want to go to A or A-plus, but that's a scary proposition that that's a B-level performance this week. Absolutely, because it's way better than anybody else in the world can even come close to at this point in time. And Morgan Hurd waiting on that score from the floor exercise to see if she officially captures the silver medal here at the national championships. I mentioned it'd be a big jump sixth last year, but she did have that surprise for her. She called it a surprise win at the World Championship. She it was did, a surprise, yeah. Yeah, and you know, she came into this competition saying, I definitely feel a little bit more expectation, some more pressure coming in here. I'm a world all-around champion. I know a lot more eyes are on me. Overall, as you watch this national championship, the great success of the women's team in the last several Olympics, and, and you in 2008, where do you think they stand looking ahead to Tokyo? I mean, if you have Simone Biles on your team, there is not a chance in the world. Yeah, it, it, they are going to reign, <laughs> unless there's a huge mistake. And now the final results. Look at the number for Simone Biles. It is six and a half points, basically, ahead of Morgan Hurd, and it's official. She wins the silver medal. Riley McCusker finishes in third. The margin of victory for Simone Biles just keeps getting higher. Five-time national all-around champ Simone Biles here in Boston. So as we say goodbye, a reminder in October, you can join us as the top gymnasts from all over the globe compete in the World Championships from Doha Cutter on NBC and the Olympic Channel. Coming up next, Jennifer Lopez stars in the series finale of Shades of Blue, and that's followed by your local news for Nastia Lukin, Tim Daggett, and Andrea Joyce, our entire NBC team here throughout the week in Boston. I'm Terry Gannon saying goodbye from the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. Thanks for watching, everybody.